Iconic would be an understatement. You can't go five seconds without hitting another stunning backdrop. An opening completely free of dialogue, just Hans Zimmer's African mix of the circle of life, a glorious sunrise, and African animals coming to greet the new prince. Magnificent visual storytelling at its finest. And fun fact, these are the English translations of those oft mispronounced Zulu lyrics. Pink pajamas, penguins on the bottom. Pink pajamas, penguins on the bottom. Obviously the better interpretation. More to do than can ever be done. Jeez, thanks for the existential dread, Lion King. 2D rack focus? Is, th is this live action? Oh, they were, they were trying to make it look real. Well played. Goodness, that lighting behind Rafiki. The way the light of the sun brightens as the fruit is broken. That's right, I'm gonna call it fruit. Everyone says it's baobab, cause that's his tree, but the inside looks nothing like baobab fruit to me. So fruit it is. <laughs> Three camera angle cuts. Like when you have an expensive explosion, so you use footage from multiple cameras. Good stuff. Really nails the importance of this moment. Sure, when Rafiki does it, everyone prances around all happy, but when Michael Jack. You know what? Never mind. That's the sound zebras make? Not the leaping antelope? True confession, this movie has been playing in the background of our car for about a month now for Jude on long trips, and I have been picturing the leaping antelope. Solid hard cut with the drum. Kimba the white lion, I mean the Lion King. Love how the mouse emerges from complete blackness that then transforms into the cave. Life's not fair, is it? First spoken words in this movie are from Scar, and interestingly, they present the underlying mythos of this movie that it sort of shoes away later. Mm, and you. Allow me to introduce you to our British, French speaking villain. Try not to make any assumptions now, kids. Mad as a hippo with a hernia. And our king of puns, Rowan Atkinson. That one isn't really a pun. But he knows animals, which makes sense as the guy keeping track of everything going on in the Pride Lands. Why quiver with fear? Hey, uh, Jeremy Irons, take all the wins. Zazu can grow teeth when needed. Perhaps you shouldn't turn your back on me. Fair warning, metaphorically, but he actually looks him in the eye when the time comes. Well, as far as brains go, I got the lion's share. Imagine being so much smarter than your brother, you can say that to his face and he'd just be like, I don't know that idiom. That's that's my best James Earl Jones. Which of course he wouldn't because he doesn't see the fatal flaw of his class segregated monarchical society. Stop, that's stop, 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 stop. It's a feel good movie. Whenever he gets dirty, you could take him out and beat him. There's Zazu the pun man. He'd make a very handsome throw rug. Apparently Hercules liked that idea. Take him out and beat him. Ah, classic Disney. Where would we be without your scores? This movie celebrates Africa, even using African choirs on top of Zimmer's composition. Before sunrise, he's your son. Careful, you guys ignored Prince Akeem's requests and he ended up coming to America. Not to ruin your childhood, but that was definitely the sound of Simba crashing into leaping antelope bones off screen. I'd recognize the sound anywhere. I'll never get over the mix of the voice actors with the animalistic roars and yawns. Every moment, every piece of music, it's all so epic and momentous. More live action camera movements with the dolly around the two characters making this whole thing feel even more real. The sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. Sooner than you think, on the setting part at least. But hey, even as a kid I appreciated the little hint there, even subconsciously. What about that shadowy place? <laughs> It'll all be yours except that one place. What about that place? Perfect. In the great circle of life. Sometimes you can use the circle of life to choke people from across the room, but that's a lesson for another day. Says that the leopards are in a bit of a spot. <laughs> what did I say about these puns? I don't know, maybe I was a dense kid, but I never noticed a single one throughout my 600 viewings. Bees buzzing, leopards in a spot. I told the elephants to forget it, but they can't. Just imagine if as a major domo or stewards of the king, you had to come up with a new pun every morning. Cheetahs never prosper. Okay. The boons are going. What are you doing, son? <laughs> Was that a little foreground volume adjustment censoring? Hmm. Simba will rule everything the light touches. What will that make you? A monkey's uncle. <laughs> right. You would be surprised since you're planning to kill him, which actually makes this line even more appropriate. Oh, I'm a little surprised to see you. You know, if you feel a little uncomfortable by Scar's paw on Simba's head, you should. All the other lions in this movie retract their claws when not using them. Not Scar. You could say he's... Prepared? Look at the light filtering through the trees above Sarabi onto her fur. Your parents will be thrilled. What with your being betrothed and all? Oh man, you hear that? Can you feel the love tonight in the background? Ooh, color and stylization change signaling the song. And look, it's a it's a great song, an enjoyable sequence, but it just gives me PTSD from the Sega game. 
stupid monkeys throwing me in the wrong direction. You can't just land in a giraffe's head that easily. I wanna be the main event. Main event. Oh, we don't get enough puns these days. No, I say stop that. What you don't no, realize. I say see here. No, say JTT was the man in the 90s. Julia had a crush on him, so I barely need to sing his praises. But I was just about to compliment his singing voice when I found out Jason Weaver actually does Simba singing. Ernest, Devin's buddy from Drumline, which was a good choice since he was also Michael Jackson in the Jacksons movie. Oh, come on, Rick, huh? But then you may never fall in love with Robert Redford. Also, you could look at this entire song as a bit of fantasy from Simba's perspective with the color change and all the animals being a little more exaggerated than before. I'm not even sure the zebras would be so disrespectful to the King's stooge. I mean, if you weren't sure. Oh. Pinji again. Quotable lines are quotable. Really have to give it up for this animation style. It's another example of slightly exaggerated humanistic features, but for the most part, they're just lions. I mean, Scar's outlines would cut glass, but everyone else looks like an animal. I have no idea. What do you think, Ed? Oh, <laughs> oh man. Ed's name is the only non-African name because... He's special? Low blow, guys. Low blow. Okay, maybe I spoke just a tad too soon. Does Bonsai have stubble while Shenzi's face is smooth? Hey, I can I can give points on the other side for, I don't know, I, I always thought Shenzi's hyena looked a lot like Whoopi Goldberg, so whatever. Oh, it's the lack of eyebrows. Uh, we could have whatever's lying around. <laughs> I never realized how much of this movie is just buns. Make mine a cub sandwich. So that's just chicken under bacon? No lettuce? Oh, you want to eat the child. Gotcha. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? There's some courage. Misguided, but courage nonetheless. I didn't know. No, did you? No, of course not. No. Ed? Honesty. I thought you were very brave. And compliments. I just gave a 2019 animated movie a bunch of credit for a realistic time-spanning sunrise, and who'd have known The Lion King did a time-aware sunset 25 years earlier, starting with pink at the beginning of the scene, ending with this greenish-blue and stars out by the end. That's what we call symbolism. On the nose or not, it brings the focus in on how unprepared Simba is. He's not even aware his dad needs to die for him to be king. Being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble. Kill Mufasa? Precisely. Ooh, Dutch tilt for the audience's unease. Thick as you are. Pay attention. I love that Scar's first verse, a full 30 seconds, is just calling the hyenas dumb without them realizing it. The lights are not all on upstairs. Are they, are they goose stepping? Subtle, Disney. Is this triumph of the will to song? Wait, is that a sickle? Oh, it's just the moon. Just the moon. Know about that? Simba, everybody knows about that. You might want to work on that little roar of yours. Not that parents don't often commiserate over their kids' misdeeds, but I don't think Mufasa really told anyone. Scar was there. The reason he knows Simba's roar was weak, even if he's almost insinuating his dad made fun of him for it, right? Like, from Simba's perspective, how else would he know? You hate him more yet? So he used the opportunity to shame Simba a little more. Work on that little roar of yours. <laughs> which ended up having the added advantage of making Simba think he started the stampede. Simba, it's to die for. You Brits in your wordplay. He gonna die. This stampede took three years. Every wildebeest is based on a singular wildebeest, and it was created using a newfangled technology called... Oh, this is this is just a sandwich wrapper. CGI. Dolly Zoom. <laughs> Yep, still one of Hans Zimmer's most heart-pounding pieces of music. And the way that dust slowly builds into a cloud you can barely see through. Long live the king. I know I shouldn't win bad guys being so good at being bad, but come on. Another amazing filmmaking shot. Zoom in on Mufasa to black, then zoom out of Simba's pupil. You gotta get up. Saddest Disney death ever? Yeah, saddest Disney death ever. Oh man, he pulls on his ear just like when he was asleep. I mean, there's just there's just no call for this, Disney. Hugging? F fake hugging? Run away and never return. Hm. I guess Zazu's statement to Scar was more important than we realized. Kill him. Didn't your mother ever tell you not to play with your food? <laughs> Even the hyena's laughs are pretty close to real life. There's Scar's sickle and hammer again. Match cut. Or Rafiki is a teleporting mandrel. Good either way. Eh, they were probably racist birds anyway. Maybe he'll be on our side. <laughs> uh, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. What if he's on our side? <laughs> Nathan Lane is always a win. Kid, what's eating you? Nothing. He's at the top of the food chain. <laughs> 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 
So, where are you from? <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> Segway win. Hakuna Matata. Another fun fact, Hakuna Matata is Swahili and roughly translates to, there are no troubles. It is in Timon's best interest to file Simba's claws down. My friends never stood down And leave it to Disney to inject a verse about flatulence into a song about the carefree lifestyle. As they say, the bare necessities of life will come to you. <laughs> Every swing back and forth is a different pose, from trapeze to dirty dancing. A hey, grub, what's it look like? Y'all joke about how tasty these bugs look, and I want to hear from every single one of you after you get back from the remake. Hakuna Matata. Slimy yet satisfying. Ernie Sabella becomes Pumbaa. You know, there's no separation between voice and character. It's the best way I can put it. He's perfect. Pecant? Pecant or pecant. Seems like a good place for. I always forget about the Mickey ears. The only Easter egg Disney used to have. A lot of you recognize this frame from last week, and that speaks to the unique and vibrant palette of this movie. A super fast bridge walking aging montage is the super fastest way to age and get those sexy lion locks. Seriously, as much as Gandalf was inspiration in high school for my long hair, who else can sing their hair to perfection? That's right, I want to look like a lion. Pumbaa missed his calling as a high diver with that perfect 10 splash. It's a small world after all. No, no, anything but that. Self-awareness from a megacorp in the 90s that hadn't even achieved half its megacorpness yet. I'll take it. At least when they own me, I'll know they recognize this song was annoying once upon a time. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Julia and her best friend have been singing that to each other for years. And I'm just now figuring out where it's from. So it's, uh... That's another quotable line win. Always thought they were just huge Danny Kaye fans, a guy I just this minute found out wrote the original. Look, you impact my wife's life, you get a win. I always thought they were balls of gas burning billions of miles away. Played as a joke, but at nine I think I was more liable to believe the Firefly theory. Ah, I see they fixed the explicit message for the blue- Oh, wait, is there still something in there? I <laughs> love that little misdirect. He opens the fruit above his head like he did at the ceremony, but rather than something mystical, he just takes a bite. Sleeps tonight. 90s kids were all very confused when they found out this song was not written by Timon and Pumbaa, seeing as Pumbaa's name is literally in it. <laughs> Saving your two buddies. <laughs> Call back, Pin. Man, that's some realistic drinking with the tongue bending backward and everything. I'm not gonna call this flirting because you should never pull your crush into the water unexpectedly. What if she had her live phone or her turkeys on her? Or worse, what if she wasn't feline well? I bet she wishes she could move faster. I'm just saying, have a little sympathy, you know? That, on the other hand, is all like, what are you doing? I don't need a bath. Oh. Also. Also, thanks Disney for not making two lions kiss. Well done. They just neck a little. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I swear, I promise. Forget it. Fine. You know, this fight reminds me of another great love story. That's right. Doug Dorsey and Kate Mosley. He wanted to play hockey, she wanted to figure skate. How could they ever find common ground? You said you'd always be there for me. Well, he kind of dodged the question, but I know what you mean. We will always be together, right? Simba. How can you blame us all for thinking the words were pink pajamas, penguins on the bottom, when Rafiki is singing about squash bananas? You know, if I've been overlooking Rafiki's beautiful beard, I think I might have been. Ooh, that water reflecting and bouncing light off the log. You know how I feel about reflections. I know your father. He's alive, and I'll show him to you. I still find this a little offensive. I get it, it's sweet to remind him his father lives in him, but even though I saw Dude Bro die, you got my nine-year-old hopes up. The director specifically created this scene to be something of a metaphor for Simba crawling through his own subconscious to get back to the heart of his problem and why he ran away in the first place, an undoing of his escape through the thorns after Mufasa dies. You know, I might credit Black Panther for making me look at this scene a little differently, which made me realize how dreamlike it is. Simba was just next to a small pool down some rocks surrounded by tall grass. Now he's in complete darkness, and by the end, he's out in the open again. So I don't think it's entirely literal. And we know he has a powerful imagination. What was that? <laughs> the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Robert Guillaume to make a serious moment lighthearted again. Another consistent laugh for me. I'm going back. Good. Still gives me chills. Rafiki's excitement, the African voices singing with Zimmer's score, the shooting stars. Top notch emotional manipulation. Lion style desert fast travel. Aww, all his backup singers are dead. What do you want me to do? Dress and drag and do the hula? Nathan nailing his audition for the birdcage. 
the greatest comedy to come out of the 90s. That's right, I said it, I made a definitive statement. I definitely probably won't contradict at some point in the future. Tell them who is responsible for Mufasa's death. I am. Tell me it's not true. It's true. Admitting when you at least think you did something wrong. <laughs> yes. If Poe could have made it from Asia to Africa, Rafiki would have been an excellent teacher for Dragon Warrior. Hey, call me Mr. Pig! All the 90s kids who grew up and saw In the Heat of the Night as adults thought it was weird Mr. Tibbs was quoting a Disney movie in a super racially charged scene. You wouldn't kill your old uncle. I mean, it's not literally Hamlet. Although Poison Tip Claws would have been a nice touch. <laughs> Embers in the eyes, that's brutal. But also resourcefulness. Yep. Ha! Another callback move. He finally got it. A wise man once said, you can either run, run from, from it, it or learn from it. Come up and brutal come up and. From what I understand, huge wildfires like this can cause rain anyway, but a burn like this is probably what the Pride Lands needed for all that vegetation to grow back. So a dramatic familial battle in a lightning storm is just what they needed. Hugging. Remember. Oh, that'll get you. I mean, I'm proud of you, son, and you've really come into your own. I'm so happy to see you fulfill your destiny. Would have been better, but still. Get it? It's a circle of life. Oh, they did it again. Every movie should be bookended like this. For this restless warrior just to be with you. Who's going to complain about a little Elton John closing credits? You weren't surprised, but happy to know that Nathan Lane, Ernie Sabella, and Jeremy Irons performed all their own songs. But pleased as punch to confirm Rowan Atkinson did too. Also, gun to my head, I would have said there were way more than five songs in this movie. It's kind of funny that in the teaser frame from last week, I mentioned this was a much more lighthearted movie. Totally forgetting about the whole totalitarian versus communist side of this movie with hyenas being the outcasts of society for no reason other than that's the way we've always done it. But look, I'm not, we're not going there today. There are a few different ways to look at it. We're gonna go with the one I think was intended. Today, we celebrate the good. Lion King is a kid's movie, and no one took that message away from this movie. Here are the lessons we did learn. It's okay to go home. Your family will always welcome you back. If your best friend growing up turns out to be a hottie who can pin you, it's okay to marry her, even if it's what your parents wanted all along. Hakuna Matata, man. The lesson isn't just don't care about anything. It's don't worry, don't dwell on things outside of your control, especially the past. Hand in hand with that, learn from your past and your mistakes. At its heart, it's the coming of age story of a son trying to fill his dad's shoes while learning the importance of humility. I'm brushing up, I'm looking down. Even if you want to trash the royal family for being royal, every single thing Mufasa says to Simba is a piece of wisdom. I'm only brave when I have to be. It takes tragedy and trying out a different way of life for most of it to really sink in, but in the end, I like to think Simba takes what he was taught by Timon and Pumbaa back to Pride Rock with him. Doesn't hurt that they're like the new hands of the king. Another lesson, British birds will rise to power in the savanna, but British lions will be fed to their underlings because they fight for equality for all. No, no, got off track again. Look, it's not called the democratically elected benevolent lion leader. I, I really am mostly joking here. There are some problematic Disney movies. This one is at worst a romanticized look at a culture different from most of ours. The hierarchy in the animal kingdom is a necessary, I hesitate to even say evil, it just is. That when it falls apart, the whole system goes down. Hyenas aren't evil either but they are in the movie. They just want without a thought of how it affects anyone else. And Scar uses their lust to his advantage. We know he has no respect for them. They're just a tool to help him gain and retain power. It's all outside the circle of life. Mufasa's goal is harmony for everyone in a stable ecosystem. The lions never take more than they need and they maintain balance while keeping the pride land safe. Just don't read up on how lion prides actually function. It's way more brutal than you'd think. There's usually only one male and he likes to keep it that way. But the Lion King is way more than just a mixed message ideological power struggle. For one, it's stunning. Look at those shadows rolling over the gorge. The opening is still one of the prettiest of all time. And I joked about CGI, but it's funny listening to them talk about this new tech that was in its infancy at the time that's so ubiquitous now. Looking back, it's hilarious that Disney believed The Lion King would be a flop. The main reason? It's an original story. Well, except for Hamlet in the Bible, but still, it's not based on a fairy tale or a well-established property. I wish this was engraved into the walls at every studio, but alas, it's just safer to bet on something you already know will do well. But you can't credit its success all to an original story and beautiful visuals or a top-notch voice cast. The music is some of the most iconic to ever come out of Disney. Thanks, Elton John and Tim Rice and Hans Zimmer and everyone who sang. I mean, the circle of life? That's a banger. The bottom of the list is Be Prepared, and even that's like a Broadway production, especially with Jeremy Irons' killer voice. 
As with most Disney movies, past and present, they took their time with every piece. Each name is essentially a description of the characters like all of Jude's books that have rabbity the rabbit type stuff. They're just in Swahili, so you don't notice unless you speak Swahili. Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. <laughs> Mufasa is king, Simba is lion, Nala, gift, Zazu, movement, Pumba, slow-witted, Rafiki, friend, Chenzi, savage, you get the idea. It's that type of attention to detail that you know goes into the entire project. Watching the behind the scenes stuff of the whole process really nails it home. I have a sneaking feeling that the ending to the remake may take some progressive liberties. I kind of hope it does. There will be some angry people, but we all need to move forward. Well, to be fair, people are already angry that they're even remaking it in the first place. And I don't disagree that it seems weird to just essentially upgrade the graphics since it's not really live action. But uh, I'm someone who already pre-ordered Final Fantasy VII, so you can guess how I feel about that. Can't cut it out. It go right back. And if I ever have a billion dollars, I will give a large chunk of that to Hideo Kojima to remake the original Metal Gear Solid with whatever the modern day graphics and engines are at the time. Shot for shot, exactly the same. Don't care. Yes, I want to relive it exactly the same, but prettier. But that's just me. Point is, if the remake has something to say and a story to tell, I'm reserving my right to like it. Also, Mulan looks awesome, so who knows. So, reminder that there won't be a video next week, but here's the teaser for the week after. Wanted the kids. Oh, sorry.